Ben, I just have a general question about kind of like bull markets and crypto and as you see them. So this is a conversation David and I uh, had last uh, week. And um, I don't know that we came to a definitive conclusion for like for our own perspectives. We might have different hypotheses on this, but like the four year cycles, that's been a thing that has been in crypto since everybody's been in crypto. And the like the market uh, kind of expects another four year cycle. Do you think we are still living in the era of four year cycles, whether it's driven by the happening or whether it's driven by like, you know, liquidity, you know, as Raul Paul says, but the four year cycle, is that a thing or is that broken this time around? I mean, it's honestly hard to argue against it. I, I think it it's easy to dismiss it. But the reality is, is, you know, Bitcoin topped into 2013, into 2017, into 2021, right? And it wasn't, much more complicated than that. And it bottomed, you know, after the midterm year here, after the, you know, the midterm here, the midterm year there, and then the same thing, right? So it seems like there is some cyclical component to to these market cycles. And actually, if you measure out, um, you know, Bitcoin's ROI, and we could even look at the uh, the same thing for Ethereum as well. But if you look at, at, at Bitcoin's ROI from the low, and we just look at the last couple of cycles, I mean, this is where Bitcoin always is at this point in the cycle as measured from the low, right? So to some degree, this time really hasn't been that different. I think the, the, the thing that I think is throwing people off this cycle is the timing of rate cuts. So last cycle, rate cuts occurred in the pre-having year. Right. They occurred in they started in, in July 31st of 2019. And that corresponded to this cycle right here, where you had this QT high interest rate bull market where you know Bitcoin USD went up and then Bitcoin dominance also went up. We've seen the same thing, and you can see how it got ahead of the cycle that came before it. And then eventually it sort of bled back down until it got in line with the prior cycle. I think you're seeing the same thing happen again, where we had another. QT bull market. And then it's basically just sort of faded. And now it's getting back in line with the prior cycle. So to a large extent, this does look awfully familiar, right? I mean, it seems like some things are are relatively predictable uh, in terms of in terms of the four-year cycle. But I also think there is another component, right? It's not just the four-year cycle. I think monetary policy also plays a, a, an important role in exactly how the cycle plays out. And at what point in the cycle do, you know, some of the uh, other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, at what point do they start to take over? And and we just haven't seen that happen yet this cycle. But I think there's, you know, there's plenty of reasons why, right? We have not yet seen the Fed lower interest rates, although that's coming up relatively soon. And we also have not seen the pivot from quantitative tightening to quantitative easing. And that could also be coming up relatively soon, theoretically. So, I think the cycle is playing out how it typically does. It's just that the timing of of rate cuts this cycle is coming much later than it did the prior cycle, and I think that's throwing people off. So, so Ben, your base case is uh, the four year cycle we're having again, and we're basically right on schedule as, as compared to to previous cycles. So, like people should wait. I I will make a note in every four year cycle that I've been a part in, uh, of around this time when things get flat, people start to doubt the four year cycle. Always happens right on schedule. So we're on schedule in the four year cycle to be in the, the period of time where people doubt the four year cycle. W- would that be an accurate sum of your uh, your base case here? Yeah, um, I do think that, you know, I, I do think that it's it's good to see that the cycle has sort of gotten back back on track where it normally was. It you know it was somewhat uncomfortable when it was back over here. If you measure it from other ways, though, like if you measure the cycle from the peak, which is probably not the best way to measure it, because, you know, the way I think, I mean, I, we, we're going to look at it regardless. But the, one of the reasons I, I like to look at it from the low is because it's hard to really take into huge consideration what happens during a manic blow off top, right? The markets are just irrational. So measuring returns from that level, not always the best. But with that disclaimer, if you look at the ROI from the cycle peak, so you go peak to peak for Bitcoin, we are still slightly ahead of where we would normally be at this point in the cycle. What's fascinating is this is really the first cycle where Bitcoin put in new all-time highs before the halving. Um, and, and that's actually reflected here on the chart. I mean, you can see that this is the green line. We're still ahead of where we were at this point in the last two cycles. So even if Bitcoin were to sell off, 
uh, after rate cuts like it did last cycle, even if it were, it could still pick back up in 2025. I mean, it, it, it might just correspond to it getting back in line as measured from the peak. So, I mean, I do think every cycle is going to throw us a curveball. Last cycle, right, it was a pandemic. Uh, you know, everyone got <laughs> annihilated. I think you guys, I mean, you guys were there too. I mean, we we woke <laughs> up and and the price of Ethereum was back at like 100 bucks. And then I think we had gone to sleep and it was $200. And we woke up the next day, it was like $100. Like what what just happened? So yeah, I, I do think that there, there's something every cycle that that does try to throw people off. And, and this cycle has certainly been no exception. Yeah, can I try and be a four-year cycle bear for a moment? Because uh, I'm I'm still skeptical uh, that the four-year cycle is intact, and and maybe at the end of the day we fast forward in six months and and we're totally right, and like the four-year cycle is intact. But like, there's some just some things that happened. Uh, the ETFs I think pulled forward a lot of price action, a lot a lot of demand. Uh, and Bitcoin especially has been experienced the benefactor of that demand. We, like it's weird that Bitcoin reached an all new high, but just a little bit and momentum didn't follow. And in all previous four year cycles, breaking all time highs meant following into like price discovery. And we have not had price discovery right in, in this current, uh, in this current market sector right now. Like right now, Bitcoin touched like $74,000 ahead of like the $69,000 previous all-time high. And it's the only one, like Ether got the ETF, but not the previous all-time high. And now we're in like a long, a prolonged crab market. And maybe I'm just in like recency bias of being here in this present market and rather than the last four-year cycle that I was a part of. But this crab market feels real long. Feels real long. And there's also like no new users and no new uh, like things to do. And so maybe that's just contributing more to the idiosyncratic nature here. But like, what what would it take to truly invalidate this four-year cycle? Because we've got the pulled for the the one year accelerated like upswing. I'm not gonna call a bull market because we haven't had price discovery uh, because of the ETFs. And then we've had this extra prolonged crab market that has like is too too long for what I would call like pattern matching into previous cycles. That's kind of my vibe. How, how do you take that, Ben? No, I mean, absolutely. I think you're asking the right questions. I, I think that once everyone becomes comfortable with one particular outcome, it's probably time for that outcome to change. It's difficult because as always, normally when Bitcoin hits all-time highs, it continues to accelerate from there. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that you could argue that the ETFs help pulled forward some of those returns. And so... In 2020, around this time, the market was generally trending up, right? I mean, we had the we had the pandemic crash, and then the market basically exploded up into the summer, a brief pullback in August and September, and then it kept going up into Q4. We're not really seeing that this time, right? The summer has been relatively boring. August, September haven't been that great. But I, I think what's really happening is, is, and it goes back to what I mentioned a few minutes ago, it's the, the effects of, of monetary policy. So for mm-hmm. instance... If if we were to take a look, and by the way, I mean, I, I will be completely honest with you guys. I I, I don't, I, I really think Ethereum could eventually go lower from here uh, before it really gets back on track. And the, the reason I say that is because what I think, what I think has happened is every cycle, there, there's this thing that happens with Ethereum. I don't know why exactly. I always find it fascinating. I, I do actually, I mean, I do consider Ethereum to be a blue chip. I only consider two blue chips in the industry, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And there's this thing that happens every cycle with Ethereum. And and it's fascinating. And it's basically the ETH-Bitcoin pair, right? It's the ETH-Bitcoin pair. And I, I think we could learn a lot, honestly, from the ETH-Bitcoin pair. And basically what happens, and, and this is why I think going back to your, your, your sort of, your observation, which is absolutely valid, is like, what's going on with this market? It just keeps on crabbing. And, and frankly, it's been going sideways with a slightly bearish bias, right? I mean, Ethereum has been putting in lower highs and lower lows. Same with Bitcoin ever since March. But I think the reasoning, the, the reason for it, and I, I think why people might be losing their way on this is, look, every cycle, ETH Bitcoin goes through this pattern right here. And essentially what it is, is it sets a top, and then it sets a low. And, and you can see that after it does that, it, it puts in sort of like a, a, a lower high, right? And the same thing here, right? A top, and then in between these, this bottom, lower high, and then sort of slowly bleed back down. This time has not been different right? This lower high right here, that was actually going into the merge, which I'm sure you guys remember was a pretty crazy, a pretty big event for Ethereum. I mean, Mm. it had been something that they had been working up to for years and years and years. It finally happened. But what's fascinating is every cycle, we go through this process where ETH Bitcoin, you know, it, it, it tries to go up, it comes back down to earth, 
goes back up again, lower high. And then it gets into this phase right here, right? Where it's just above the range low that it set in between the two peaks, but it's not enough to really turn it back around. And then what happens is after it sort of crabs in that range for a number of months, it eventually breaks down, right? It eventually breaks down. So you can see that the first time it broke down in 2016, it had a fake out. It was actually in June, right? So it was actually in June of 2016. It broke that prior range low. The cycle after that, it occurred in July, right? The cycle after that, you can see it first started to break down really, you know, right around January, there's a wick below it. And then it really started to go below it in March around the time that Bitcoin topped out. Now, what's fascinating about this chart is if you look at it through the lens of Ethereum, right? So look at it through the lens of Ethereum. And, and you can see precisely how it has played out every single time. So look at ETH. And remember, the first time it broke support in 2016 was in June, right? And then if you look at Ethereum in 2016, it topped in June. And from there, ETH bled about 70% before getting back on track. And then it went up in the post-having year, right? It went up in the post-having mm -hmm. year, which is normally the one year of the cycle where Bitcoin dominance goes down, right? Every other year, Bitcoin dominance tends to go up. It's the post-having year where Bitcoin dominance goes down. So that was the first That was the first cycle, right? That was the 2016 cycle. And then if you look at what happened next, right? ETH Bitcoin in 2019. When did it break down? It broke down in the summer, right? June, July is when ETH Bitcoin broke down. In 2019, ETH USD topped out in, you know, June, July, right? So you can see that both prior cycles, ETH USD followed that pattern. And after finding that top, it bled about 70%. Now, it's easy to get sidetracked on that and say, well, why include the pandemic? But I'm not, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm purposely excluding this pandemic crash. Like, we're just looking at what happened going into the end of this year. Mm. So, because of that, right, because of that, when I'm looking at ETH Bitcoin, I'm like, all right, well, we saw a fake out here in March and April below the range low, kind of like 2016. And if you go look at what ETH did, that's exactly when it topped out, right? March, right before the Bitcoin halving. And so far, it's already dropped 54%, right? So to a large extent, this time has not been different, right? It actually <laughs> is playing out in a very similar manner. And what's fascinating is... If you look at, at ETH Bitcoin, the breakdown 2016, 2019, after that, right, right after that, that's when Ethereum bled 70%. And then it, it started to, to, to pick back up the following year, right? The following year. And it, and it bottomed out in both 2016, ETH USD bled until December, right? So December 2016, December 2019. And then it picked back up the following year. And you could argue that it was picking back up right here in 2020. And then the pandemic happened, right? And it kind of threw yeah. everything off course. What's fascinating, if you fit the data points, these data points with these data points, sort of like the non-bubble data points, if you want to call them that, if you fit those data points together, you get a curve that looks like this, right? So this is the, uh, the logarithmic regression band. And what's fascinating is every time ETH Bitcoin has broken down, 2016, 2019, and now 2024, every time ETH USD bled into Q4, into the regression band, and then it had an explosive move the following year, right? The following year. And then that year where it has the explosive move tends to be the um, where it starts to outperform Bitcoin. That tends to be the the post having year so i that, kind of that's think, where we would call it the the bull market the true bull market the, the, the main QE manic phase. bull market right like the qe phase of the bull market right right the 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 the, the phase where bitcoin is no longer leading right because i think a mm. lot of people think that ethereum always outperforms bitcoin in a bull market and i would i would say that is correct when there's lower interest rates and money printing right hmm. but when you're in a phase where higher and higher rates and more and more QT where the Fed's reducing the size of the balance sheet, that's where people tend to flee higher risk assets and go to lower mm -hmm. risk assets. Now, I'm not, in the grand scheme of things, Ethereum is number two for a reason, right? I, I think it is the second, you know, the, the second safest one. But I still do believe that just by market cap alone 
and by um, the fact that Bitcoin's been around the longest, right? That's generally going to be a safer play for, for most people, especially in a high interest rate environment. So I do think there's a pivot coming soon by the Fed and therefore ETH Bitcoin should theoretically bottom out sometime between now and the end of the year. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.